Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our final webinar in our distribution series. So we'll kick off um, just to do a quick introduction. My name is Amy Hughes, and I'm the sales manager at Envisage Cloud. Um, this morning, I also have our lovely Michelle due for joining us. She is our partner account manager at SciCon, um, and she will be taking us through uh, some of the solutions in just a few moments. Today's objective, this is our final actually webinar in the series. So we have um, previously done two other webinars in a distribution series. If anyone has not been able to join or would like to go recordings, please let us know. Um, and we'd be happy to send them on. Um, I suppose today's objective is really to uh, show you uh, some of the SciCon solutions with regards to distribution and how uh, deploying such solutions will be able to save you time within the organization. Um, we're going to demonstrate on how taking one or one of the specific modules of the distribution bundle um, will hopefully um, provide extra functionality, but also simplify some of the processes um, regarding your current routines. And what we'll also do is show you the enhancement that can be brought to your business through automation. So we all are aware, I suppose, of some of the challenges we're facing in the supply chain and the logistics issues that we're having. So what we're, I suppose the aim of this series or webinar series is really just to provide you with some solutions that potentially give you more insightful information and make, allow you to make decisions a little bit quicker with regards to your customers or your suppliers or stock, um, which we'll show you just in a few moments. The agenda today is we've already done our introductions and um, we'll chat a little bit about what SciCon distribution does. Um, Michelle will then demonstrate some of the solutions themselves. So specifically today, we're gonna uh, show you the warehouse replen replenishment mo module. We'll chat around the barcoding and warehousing module and we'll also show you the career integration piece. Um, and we'll then recap on some of the benefits of the, the modules that we've shown you today. Psycon distribution. So what is it? I know we spoke about this on previous webinars, but for anyone that didn't, uh, wasn't able to make these, I suppose just a little bit of a recap on what Psycon distribution is. Um, Psycon have been, are solely Sage 200 developers and have been doing um, what they've really done and really create, uh, smartly done is um, really enhanced the functionality um, available in Sage 200. So, so creating some of these Psycon modules. Um, I suppose with the, the SciCon distribution modules, the great thing about these is that they sit really well within Sage 200. So users aren't going outside of Sage 200 to, to access any of the modules. They sit really well and work really well within Sales Ledger and the Purchase Ledger within Sage 200. And um, they've cleverly separated them out into nine modules. So if you don't need full module or full distribution, you can buy, you can purchase the module separately. So whatever functionality um, you really like, you can have. Um, I suppose the ideas uh, around these modules is really to allow you to improve costs, move stock quicker, reduce your stock holdings, and um, the ability to be able to see seasonal trends and manage your seasonal trends, um, increase telesales productivity. So make, make sure the orders are you know, uh, placed quicker and more effectively. Um, we can also incorporate sales forecasting within future stock projections. So being able to the ability to see future stock orders. Um, and seasonal trends and also suggested purchase order creations. So there's some of the modules around the distribution um, themselves. So with regards to the SciCon distribution modules, we've already said there's nine modules there. Um, previous two sessions and webinars that we've already hosted, we've ran through some of these modules already. So please watch them back if any of them, if you, if you take an interest in any of the modules were shown there on the left-hand side. Today, as I said, we're mainly going to focus on the barcoding and warehousing uh, solution and um, the courier management and courier integration, which is quite new. So it's, I'm actually we're excited to talk about that today. And we'll also talk about replenishing the warehouse as well. So I'm going to stop talking um, and let Michelle show you the solutions themselves and hand it over to Michelle. Thanks very much, Amy. Um, just a couple of things before we actually get in and actually show you the software. Um, when we talk about distribution and the nine modules that sit within it, the one of those that I'm going to show you today is warehouse replenishment. Barcoding and warehousing is a completely separate solution from that, but obviously is taking some of that functionality and giving you the opportunity to treat your orders, your goods receipting in slightly different ways. So we're going to look at container management. 
and we're going to look at warehouse replenishment so that we can actually do uh, intelligent things around one warehouse to another warehouse and how we want to replenish them and then create a stock transfer that we can then pick, pack and dispatch using barcoding. If you don't want to use barcoding, if that's not for your business, that doesn't mean to say that you can't use the stock transfer in the warehouse replenishment because it actually sits in both solutions. But what we're going to do today is show you it in all of its glory in one single screen. So I've got about 25 minutes to show you quite a lot of software, guys. So I'm going to tell you a bit of a story with it rather than taking you through every setting that sits in the background. But if you want to delve deeper into the products and you want to see a lot more of what's going on, then, of course, we will be able to take you through a process and just can't reach out to the guys at Envisage and they'll be able to help you uh, in that in their endeavours. So hopefully you should guys should be able to see my screen now which is perfect so i've got everything switched on live inside of the system here and the very first thing that you'll see on the screen is under the guise of container management so in container management what we actually allow you to do is to create another level level of analysis over and above your purchase orders so that you can maintain and fill up a container and then track the progress of that container against your purchase order. What we're going to do with container management today is we're going to receive that whole container in using barcoding and warehousing. But again, very, very simple uh, process, capitalizing on the functionality that you already have in Sage 200 to give us that environment. So let's start with that first. Container management sits under the Cycon distribution modules. There's container management. And the other one that we're going to look at today is warehouse replenishment. So we'll start with container management first, just so that we can actually see what I'm about to do in the system. So in here, what I've done is I've created, this is my container management list, the one that I'm already in. And what we're going to do is potentially go in and create a new container. I've already done that. By creating a new container, you're basically saying it's a 20 foot container, it's a 40 foot container. And then you understand the capacity of that. By supplementing the information that you have against your stock records inside of Sage, which we give you a utility to do, you can then put weights and measures against them. Once you then create a purchase order for the purchase of that item, we'd then be able to understand how much volume you're taking up within a container. It's relatively easy stuff, but it's not stuff that you get in standard Sage. So if I go in and quickly have a look at my container, so I'm just going to go in and amend the container, you'll see that right now I've got nothing in it. I've said it's a 20 foot container. You can maintain the different sizes. And at the moment, because I don't have anything in it, I don't know what the volume of the uh, stuff that's in that container is or what the weight is. What you're also going to have is the ability to add in tracking info. And in here, you can create what is essentially a profile or a template for what that shipment process would be. So I can say, these are the dates where it leaves the port. This is the date where it reaches stage one. This is the date where it reaches stage two. So that when I get a tracking update back from the shipping company, I can then say it's reached that stage and that's confirmed. Or I can note that there are problems or notes that I need uh, at each level. The whole effect of this is that the final date will be the date that you are expecting the container. And then everything that is on that container, all of the purchase orders on that container can automatically update all of the purchase orders with the expected date. That's what we're really looking to achieve. You may have seen previously that we can have in distribution, there is a pre-allocations utility. That pre-allocations utility is going to enable you to say, this item is on this container and it's pre-allocated or reserved, soft allocated, to that particular sales order. So everything starts talking to each other. So whilst they can be independent, brought separately as modules, they also work very nicely together. So I can create my container, I can, can, look, I can create the tracking profile behind that container and I'll be able to see that against each of the purchase orders, which I say are on it. I can also put attachments and memos against the container. So any of the shipping documentation that comes through can also be added uh, into that. We have some analysis codes and we also 
take this information from the container and allow you to create Cycon CRM tasks and cases. And yet another module, guys, but if you're interested, we can look at that one separately. Ultimately, all that's, what that's going to enable you to do is to send a task out to somebody else, potentially even a non-Sage user, to say, this container's late, can you chase it up? This container's late, can you talk to your customer to tell them that the product's not going to be in on time? That kind of thing uh, is more than possible. But again, we are looking at a variety of different things. So I can add a container line in here, and that will enable me to go and look at my purchase orders and add them in. We're not going to do it from here. What we're actually going to do is look back at our purchase order list. And there's our purchase orders. And you can see I've got two purchase orders from AMV Haulage. They are two separate entities, but let's just have a quick look and see what my AMV Haulage purchase order says. So I've got a thousand espresso cups, which I am ordering. And what I can do here, and you can probably see there's various different places that you can switch it on. So we switch on functionality inside Standard Sage so that we can select a container. If I go back in to edit the item, you can also say different lines on a purchase order are on different containers. So again, it allows you that flexibility. So we're gonna choose that this particular line, so remember you obviously could be creating a container at the point at which you create a purchase order. So I'm gonna choose an existing one, which I've created, container number five. That's the actual container number, that's our internal reference for it but I could equally create a new container from here. So we're gonna say, yep, that's gonna go on container number five. And we're just gonna click okay to that. And it says, would you like to use the delivery date associated to the container? So I'll just say yes to that. And I'm just gonna save that one away. So that was purchase order 3860. I'm just gonna close that down. And we're gonna also do exactly the same with purchase order 3859 which obviously as far as Sage is concerned are two separate things, but what we're gonna do is tie them together now and bring them through onto a single container. So again, let's just go in and edit our line. And again, this one for a hundred kettles, which we want to add to that container. We're gonna bring that in, add it to the container, click okay. Again, we're gonna say, yep, the purchase order date on there should be that. And you can probably see at the top of the screen now, there is the ability for us to be able to see the tracking profile. So again, it is your choice as to whether or not you bring the container tracking profile into here so that it is visible within the purchase order. So I can either set it up or not. I won't bother with for the purpose of today's exercise, but again, moving back to when we are looking at our purchase orders, we'd also be able to see the container tracking profile uh, in there as well. So I'm just going to say no for the purpose of that exercise. I don't want to set up a new one. I actually want it to be my shipment from my container, et cetera, et cetera. So we're just going to save that away. And we now have two purchase order lines, two purchase orders indeed on our container. And that might be 16 different purchase orders, 17, 25, 125 different purchase orders that are coming through into our container management. And again, we're just gonna pop in here just so that you can see that both of those lines are indeed now pulled together into this environment for me. And you'll also note that against my espresso cup, I haven't got any volume and weight against the stock item. Therefore, it can't calculate it. However, against the kettle, I do. So it will start calculating and adding up what your volume and your weight is for each individual line in a purchase order to give you a total volume, total weight on your container. And if you then said that your container, your 20 foot container had a maximum capacity of, you'd then be able to compare the two things together. And that's really what we're looking to achieve. But both of those purchase order lines now are indeed available and you can see what's been received, what the outstanding quantity is, what the quantity was for the container, all the way through the entire process. So we're going to actually do that via barcoding and warehousing in just a second and actually bring in and goods receipt that entire container. However, if we just pop back in to the distribution modules, I also want to show you what warehouse replenishment is going to be able to achieve for you. And it's two main elements. So the first one is my stock shortage transfers. In here, I can actually create an instruction for somebody. So let's just go in and create a brand new transfer. 
and I can say that I would like to move from one warehouse to another warehouse a list of products. There is, of course, the ability for you to be able to do this inside of Standard Sage, but what we add to that is the, the ability for you to add the logistics in, pick it, pack it, dispatch it, receive it in in the receiving warehouse. I'm going to go in and I'm going to say that my dispatch date is indeed today and we're going to say that we'd like to move from the warehouse to the factory a list of products. So I can go in and I can add my items in to my list of products. So first one we're going to do in here is we're going to move Let's choose something with some stock, guys. That's always handy, isn't it? So I've got a lot of pencil skirts that we did previously in our stock matrix, which don't have any stock. So let's actually move some of these door handle packs. And we can select where they're moving from. So they're moving from this bin location and they're going to a bin location in the factory, which is just goods in. OK, I can then decide what quantity I'd like to move. And of course, I can create an entire list. There's also an import available for this as well. So if you want to be able to input, I've got a particular customer that has, that does um, pet supplies and they do a lot of pet shows. So they actually move stock to the actual arena. So let's say it's Crufts, where they are going to be able to uh, have a stand. So they're moving stock to there. So they set up a warehouse as Crufts move everything over using the import so that the guys in the warehouse can pick, pack and dispatch it and then they can receive it in. Ultimately, then at the end of the show, when they've got stock left, they can then do a transfer back to the original warehouse. It keeps things nice and tidy. And there's a good example of real life use for you. However, there may be a transit time between one warehouse and another. So what we actually do is create an additional warehouse against the stock item called in transit so that you can actually see what's in transit. So it's left your warehouse, but it hasn't actually received the other way, it been received in the other warehouse as yet. So we're just gonna say, we'd like to transfer 10 of those. And again, the whole process is the same as a pick, pack and dispatch really. So I can say, yep, 10 of those moving. And I'm also gonna allocate 10 to this particular stock transfer. And I'm just gonna say, print my picking list without barcoding and warehousing. That's exactly what that will do for you. With bulk owning warehousing, it'll actually put that pick list onto the handheld device for the guys in the warehouse to be able to achieve it. Without bulk owning and warehousing, you can dispatch the transfer and you can also receive the transfer in. With bulk owning and warehousing, your guys in the warehouse will be able to do exactly that. And we're going to do ours via that route. So I'm just going to save that away. It'll then give it a reference number. I maybe should have put a, a description in here, guys, for us. Let's actually just pop back in and edit the transfer. And we'll just actually put a description in, which is the test for Envisage. So for you guys, just so that I can easily identify that. And you'll be able to see the new transfer number sitting there with my description. So again, I can manage that at any point. So I can see a full history of what's gone on when it was allocated, when I printed the pick list, who received it, who dispatched it, and I can see what's been allocated. And indeed, I can pre-allocate to my stock transfers. Fantastic. So we've got container management going on, we've got stock transfers going on. And ultimately, what we are going to do at the end of this process is see that all coming through via barcoding and warehousing. So one of the other utilities inside of warehouse replenishment, in addition to the stock shortage transfers, is stock replenishment. And what that actually enables you to do is to create a transfer of what is essentially your minimum stock within a warehouse, the transfer quantity and the shortage that you have. And then off the back of that, create transfer actually creates that stock shortage transfer. Again, if you want to see that in more detail, guys, I can take you through it. But ultimately, it isn't just about having a minimum stock level of items where I want to purchase them. I might have a minimum stock level within my warehouse that I need to replenish from another warehouse. And that's what stock uh, the uh, stock replenishment will do for you. Want to see it in more detail? Do let me know. Creating the transfer off the back of the recommendations of what it is that I need will indeed allow me to create that stock shortage transfer so that I can move stock around. So that's exactly what we're going to do next, guys. We're gonna pop back in to my purchase order list so that we can actually see what it is that we're going to receive in. And we're going to receive that in via a container. 
I'm going to pop out now to my device. The device that I'm using is a SUIC device about the size of an iPhone 11. You'll see that Cycon barcoding is sitting here for your users in the warehouse. Let's just go back into Sage one more time because I do want to show you where barcoding and warehousing sits as a menu option within the solution. And in here, I can control what the guys on the handheld device are going to be able to do. So these are your users and permissions. So I have a user set up called Michelle. There's Michelle. You can see the last time that she logged in. She's not a Sage user, she's a barcoding user. And in here, I can determine what she's able to do on the handheld device. Instant communication directly through to Sage. It runs via Wi-Fi, so nice and easy for us. So again, I'm about 114 miles away from where Sage is. So when I go into Cycon barcoding, so let's just actually open up the barcoding utility on the screen. Here it is. As you can see, I can receive purchase orders. So if I go into receive purchase orders, remember our purchase orders, 3859 and 3860 are here for me to receive independently. That's fine. Receive them independently, not a problem. Go in and look at the purchase order 3843. And you can see I have a number of items, not the ones that we put on. These are just us saying, yep, I've got 54 of these. Again, scan the barcode, identify the barcode, type in the quantity, use the plus and minus buttons. There's loads of things that we can do around that. This isn't supposed to be a full barcoding demonstration. But again, bottom left hand corner, I can take a picture. My very messy office, guys, I apologize. But let's actually take a picture of my goods receipt note, which just so happens to be my mouse mat where I can say, there's my goods receipt note. And then I can move on through that process and then say, yep, I'd like to confirm receipt of those items. And that will literally instantly talk to Sage so that we are able to then say, all was received, okay. And submit that away. And we are going to receive those items in. So what we should see at the top of the screen any second now is a little green banner. And that's my guy in the warehouse done. That was him receiving a purchase order in and it is now inside of the system, stock updated, available to sell. Perfect. We're going to do exactly the same with 3859 and 3860, but we're not going to do them independently because what we actually have the opportunity to do is to receive the entire container. So as you can see, here are my containers. I have container reference numbers and there is our container, container number five, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to look in there. And again, I can scan the barcodes of the boxes, the container, whatever it might be. However, I can do those independently. So show all expected supplier container items. If I just click that little button there, it'll actually show me two separate purchase orders. Remember, 1,000 espresso cups, 100 kettles ready for me to be able to uh, receive. So I could do them independently. And of course, I can scan a barcode uh, to be able to do that. So bear with me for a second there, guys, and I will do exactly that. So I've just scanned my barcode. And in this scenario, I actually don't know what that barcode is. So what it actually gives you the opportunity to do is to store the barcode against that particular item. So if I say yes to that, it will say, well, which item was it? I'll say it was my espresso cups. It's now stored. So next time I scan the barcode, it knows, yep, that's an espresso cup. And off we go merrily through the system. So I can independently receive those items in, count them in essentially, or I can set all expected items as received. So if you've got a container with thousands of items on, hundreds of items, 20 items, ultimately this is your opportunity to receive them all. And you can see what we've done by saying set all expected items as received is exactly that. We're receiving those items in fully. I'm just gonna confirm that away. It says, what do you want to do with them? Do you want to put them into the areas within your warehouse where they're designed to go? That's an option. I'm just gonna confirm receipt, put them into the goods in area. But the reality is against my system as well. I could also print labels for them should I wish to. I'm just going to confirm receipt exactly as we saw it against the purchase order. Again, in goes our narrative to say that the container was received. 
where my so in we go with a narrative submit that away say yes to that we now have received all the items on a particular container so the two things are working quite nicely together so back inside of Sage, I'm just going to show you what's actually happened to uh, a couple of those uh, purchase orders. Certainly, we haven't been back into the purchase order inside of Sage to receive those items. But what we can now see against the individual purchase order, when we go in to show our quantities, that a thousand of those have indeed been received. And if we just go in and edit that item, in fact, I'll show you that in a slightly different screen, uh, guys, but I can also see the container history from here if I've got the permission to see it. And you can see where that particular uh, amount of coffee cups were, was actually added to the container. So that's the history of the container and who did it and what date, maybe if it's changed, if it's moved container, I'd also be able to see that level of information um, as well. So we're just gonna pop out of this screen and I'm just going to show you one more time. If there are any questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat. We will cover those. Or if there's any questions um, after the sessions, please feel free to reach out to the guys at Envisage. But we're just going to pop back in here and view that because I've got a slightly different view switched on to enable us to see it came from a container. We go in and we can view the item. And not only that, we can also see, this is what I was looking for, which is my deliveries. So I can actually see when it was actually received in and who buy on the handheld device. And if they have taken an image, which we didn't on our container, the document would appear here and I can view the documents accordingly. Again, lots of different things, lots of different options for you, whole ream of different things that we can talk to you um, about. So on the reverse of that, we also have the ability for us to be able to pick, pack and dispatch. So we're going to look at that inside of barcoding and warehousing, and it's going to be in our stock transfer. So those stock shortage transfers, you know, as I've already said, that this stock shortage transfer was actually initiated via distribution. It does actually exist in both modules. But if you don't want to use barcoding, you still have this utility. So you could go in and say, I would now like to dispatch that item and then receive it in in the corresponding warehouse. However, for us, we're going to do that in barcoding as well. So we have a transfer here, transfer number 26. And I could go in and do exactly that in here. We're not going to. We're going to see that back on our device in barcoding. So in here, again, each user, as you can see, is logged into a particular warehouse. So Michelle, who is my user, is logged into a company called Michelle Duford and into a warehouse called Warehouse. Not a lot of um, poetic license there, guys. So in here, I'm now going to look at not dispatching a sales order. We're going to do that in just a second. What we're going to do is we're going to pop in here and we're going to dispatch our stock transfers. So that will actually show me transfer number 26, which we created inside of Sage. It shows me the items that are on it. It shows me the first column. Essentially, I've got four columns here. The first column you'll see is my list of uh, information about that stock transfer, where it's going, why it's going, any of the notes that I added in. Then it will show you your items to pick, just like you would have on a sales order. But not only that, where to go and get them from. So what location in your warehouse? There's AC10A, as you can see. So go get that door handle pack from AC10A. And again, scan the barcode. Should you have a barcode, type the quantity in that you're actually moving. It's all instant right back through the system. And you'll see that that's now moved into a stage called packing. You don't have to have packing switched on, but there's my packed items. And then we can simply say we're packing it to a box, we're packing it to a pallet, whatever it might be, or we're simply dispatching it. So I can pack all the picked items and then move it through to dispatch. Again, so I've got three stages, pick, pack and dispatch. You don't have to go that far. It could simply be pick and then dispatch everything that's been picked. It really does depend on how you've got the system set up and what you want to be able to achieve with it. It will then produce for you a dispatch note 
to a printer of your choice. I am not connected to a printer, guys. So it will actually dispatch my stock transfer for me, but it won't actually print the dispatch note. If you were using the Cycle and Documents utility, it could even actually send an email of the dispatch note directly to um, the client or to the other warehouse or whoever it is that we're talking to. But for us today, I'm just going to dispatch all of the selected items. Now, that little whirring on the screen is instantaneous. You'll get the little green banner to tell you, yes, that's been done. The reason why it's whirring on the screen is it's looking for a printer that I'm not connected to. So there's a whole ream of different things that you can do inside of the system, uh, guys, to connect your users to default printers. So again, I won't bore you with too much of the details, but you will actually see against my users and against Michelle. Let's go in and edit her. You can see that she's got this set of default printers or not, as the case may be, uh, switched on. So you can also give them access to different warehouses should you wish to. You can also give them access to a variety of different settings which allow them to either dispatch things, pack things, add things onto a sales order, a whole ream of different things that we can do in there. So essentially what's happening with my uh, transfer is it's being dispatched and then in the corresponding warehouse, so that's the system telling me you're not connected to a printer. I'll just show you that actually, because it's quite, rather than hearing that horrible noise, you can see it says I've dispatched it successfully, but you're not connected to a printer for this particular action. So what, you might want to print that separately. So I'm just going to come out of that screen and we're going to pop back in. And this time I'm going to change my warehouse. And I'm going to choose the warehouse that we were sending it to. So I'm now connected to that warehouse. So I'm a different user potentially receiving my items in. So you can see I'm now connected to a different warehouse. Back inside of Sage, let's just pop back into our stock transfer one more time. We should be able to see in here if we have a quick look at the history of that item. So I'm just going to go in and edit that transfer to my test for Envisage. And you can see where it has indeed been created, allocated, picked and dispatched and is now ready to be received into the other warehouse. What has also happened now that we have essentially, I'm just going to use the expression, got rid of it. But as we've dispatched it, those door handle packs, as you can see, there was 10 of them. They've been allocated. They have been dispatched. What we're also going to do is just pop into the stock control, just into the stock list, just so that you can see what we actually do here as well. So there's my door handle pack. And when I look in the locations, you can see where we've created this in transit warehouse. So you don't lose sight of your stock, despite the fact that it's not with you at this point in time, it's being moved to the factory. It's not in the factory. It's not no longer in the warehouse. It's in this in transit location. And you can see 10 of them are sitting there. With barcoding and warehousing, you can also switch on things like, you know, bin location, picking orders, allocating orders, the whole gambit's all switched on for us. Back inside of the system back in the factory this time we're not going to dispatch a stock transfer we're going to receive a stock transfer and there of course is transfer number 26 got 10 of them to receive again scan the barcode that's on there type it in confirm receipt of those that's now instantly done all via wi-fi all live to the system we're just going to swap our warehouse back on the screen guys just so that you can see the right place for us to be, which is my default warehouse. But back inside of Sage, we have indeed moved those items. They're no longer in transit and our stock in the, where, in the factory has actually increased by the 10. It's all instant back to Sage. Got to love a little bit of live software. So the final little bit in this process for us is to take you through the sales order and its ability 
for us to be able to link that through to courier information. At this point in time, we are working with a number of existing couriers for the UK market. In Southern Ireland, we are also talking to a number of couriers to bring them on board as well. So it'd be very interesting to, if it's of interest to you, it'd be very interesting to talk to you guys to see which ones you're using the most. And ultimately, we have around seven or eight live couriers in the UK. We've around 14 additional couriers that we're working with to get them live with our solution um, as well. And a number of, in fact, at the moment, it's DPD Island and Ampost that we have some connection with to try and get them on board as well. So let's just pop in and actually put on a sales order. So I'm just going to go into my sales order list. I'm going to create a brand new order and we're going to do this for a recognized company. It's going to be Psycon. And the reason I do this is so that I can show you that there is indeed synergy between what we are doing with Courier and what we are doing with or what Standard Sage is doing with your sales order processing. So we're just going to add a quick item in here. Again, remember from previous sessions, you can use all of the telesales functions for my templates, my telesales, my stock matrix, my historical lines. I can copy lines. There's a whole ream of different things that we can switch on for you, which we have covered previously. And if you need more information about, we can look at in the future. So what we're going to do is indeed sell some of those door handle packs. And we're going to sell 10 of them. And we're going to sell them for, I better put in a decent price for them, guys. They're 230 pounds. Well, that's, yeah, 230 pounds will do, given that the cost of them is 226 pounds. I've also got switched on a whole ream of other things. Oh, is it going to be a manufactured item? Is it a service item? My door handle pack could be anything that we want it to be. It might also have a number of different barcodes attached to it from different suppliers. There's a whole ream of things that we sit in the background with. But what we're interested in today is we've got them, they're in stock, they're allocated. We now want to pick, pack and dispatch them out of the door. But we also want to tell our courier to come and get them. So I'm going to simply say save to that. We are now going to pop back in and look at the information on the screen in the delivery and invoicing screen because what I want to use here is a recognized Psycon address because that's what the courier needs. The courier will also need things like the country code, the contact information. So having all of the right information that the courier needs is important for those people that are already using uh, careers of any description, even if you've got your own separate um, ways of working with them, this is the information that they need. I can also add into that delivery instructions. So things like leave it with a neighbor. That will all appear on the label for the courier as well. However, let's just pop back into my order details, making sure that I've got everything that I do indeed need. I could choose a courier at this point. I'm not going to. I could also choose a, a particular person in the warehouse to be the assigned picker, packer, dispatcher. I can also mark it as being ready to pick. If I want to restrict people from sending out sales orders, then I can leave that ready to pick automated flag uh, off so that you've got full control over things. Really quick and easy, nice to use. And that is my sales order which we are now going to do the dispatch of. Now, bearing in mind that I've also got manufacturing and I've also got service switched on. There's a few other things that you're going to see on the screen uh, popping up in just a second, but I'm not interested in them for today's purposes. If you're interested, please do give us a shout. Ultimately, ultimately it's the sales order 5470 that I want to be able to pick, pack and dispatch. There are no back-to-back -back orders. None of those other things uh, coming in. Back into my sales order list, we can see 5470 ready and allocated. Not yet ready for dispatch because I actually need to print an acknowledgement, which I will do just for the purpose of today's exercise. 
and it's because I how I've got the system switched on. I'm also going to use Cycon documents to be able to do that, guys, just so that you can see that it's a nice, easy process to link everything together. So the Cycon documents, which is the bit that allows you to see the goods receipt note against your purchase order, for instance, from a barcoding perspective, or to add documents against your container, that is also enabling you to send documentation out. So there's my sales order. And instead of using the standard Sage print, I'm going to use this button here, which is email and archive. And it will take any documentation that needs to go with that stock item because it's a sales order acknowledgement, like a specification uh, with it. It will also give me a header page and potentially a terms and conditions page uh, with it as well. These things are all options for you and just instantly send that out to the client. I've got mine going into my drafts just so that you can see what the output looks like. And again, nicely formatted little email in my drafts for sales order 5470 with that nicely formatted email. And in my order acknowledgement, you can see a potentially terms and conditions page, header pages, nicely formatted. Equally, it will have stored that document exactly where we've been before. We can go back in to view our sales order and we can see at the bottom of the screen, any second now. There we go, a few of those uh, other little utilities popping up on the screen for us. We're not really interested in them for today's purposes, but when I go in and view my documents, we can see that we do indeed have that sales order acknowledgement that I can reproduce an email off again. But now that we've acknowledged our sales order, we're now going to be able to pick, pack and dispatch it out of the door. So we're gonna pop back into dispatch our sales orders. Loading this into the system means that I can filter what I'm seeing on the screen, allow access for priorities, for instance, for analysis codes that you bring through from uh, Sage. I'm simply going to click cancel to that because I'm just going to scroll through the entire list of everything that needs to be picked, packed and dispatched today so that you can see our order 5470 ready for dispatch. The first screen shows me all of the order details. The second screen is your pick. So I'm going to pick the 10 of those. Before I do that, look at my door handle pack. You see there's a little image here. Again, that image is stored inside of Sage against the stock item and visible for your guys on the handheld device. I'm going to go in and say, yep, yeah, I am indeed picking 10 of those door handle packs from the unspecified area. And whoops, she says, let me do that one more time. And she put in 10 little that's me having a little moment, dropping it on the floor, guys. Don't do that in a live environment. That's not a good thing to do. Let's just go back into barcoding. One more time and see if I can actually get that on the screen. I've lost it. There it is. Fabulous. Let me actually type in there properly. There's my 10. And we're simply going to say, yes, I've now picked them. What's actually happening live back inside of Sage now is it knows that that sales order is indeed being picked. So we're going to pop back in here. We're just going to simply open up that order. And what you'll notice on the screen, again, lots of different things popping up for us, which we know about. The thing that barcoding is doing for us now is it's telling us this sales order is includes items which have been picked but not yet packed and at the top of the screen it tells me that it's currently being picked by Michelle it's live that's really what I want you to see in here in the quantities you'll also be able to see that we've picked 10 but we haven't yet dispatched them perfect so full communication right back to Sage at any point in time final two things guys we're now going to go in Again, we could simply go in and pack that, or we can go straight to dispatch and essentially dispatch all of the picked items. So let's just go back to my pack and we're gonna dispatch all picked items. And this is where we now have an option to choose the courier service of choice. If there is no courier, 
If you don't use career integration, it will be switched off anyway. If you use the career integration, you still have an option to choose no courier. If you are using the career integration and you have a number of services, they will all pop up on the screen for you. We're going to choose our DPD next day delivery. It says, would you like to dispatch this order? I'll simply say yes to that. It will now disappear from my screen. And at the same time as all of those things happen, the dispatch note will go out to the client if you automate it, or it will print it somewhere in your warehouse. It will also send an instruction via the API to the courier to tell them to come and get it, and it will produce the courier label for you. It will also give you the consignment number, the shipping or tracking reference, and the actual copy of the courier label for you to be able to reproduce should you wish to all held against your sales order so when we go back in and view our sales order we'll be able to go in and see that that line has indeed been i do have a little blue circle from time to time far too many things running as you can see in here so I'm just going to go into my quantities. There you can see it's now been dispatched. Let's go in and view the item. I could also view the dispatches down here, but if you're doing it at item level, you'll be able to see in the dispatch that it has indeed been dispatched by Michelle, full quantity of 10. Here is my courier shipment ID, my tracking number, and the courier service. And when we pop down here, we can then see a reproduction of the courier label for us to be able to see it. And you can also see where we've entered in that delivery instruction, leave it with a neighbor in here as well. That in its entirety, guys, is more than enough of my voice uh, for today, a little bit over in terms of time. I really appreciate you listening. There's so much more that we can show you. And if you found any of it of any interest and you need more information, please reach out to the guys at Envisage. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks so Welcome. much. Um, I'm just going to quickly share my screen and we will recap on some of the benefits. So I hope that's really given you a flavor of what some of the, I suppose, additional functionality that's available through the SICON distribution modules. And um, just some of the benefits, I suppose, is really just to, to show you some of the, the additional functionality that's available and hopefully help you simplify and automate the, the distribution processes. Um, as we've already said, there's nine separate modules, so you, you know you can pick and choose what's uh, suitable or what you require. Um, you can top up multiple remote warehouses based on the intelligence, I suppose, what, what that was our primary focus, Michelle was showing you today. Um, also the courier integration piece as well, so the ability to be able to, uh, to, to, to look at your uh, printer labels for your couriers um, at your sales order dispatch. The integration with SICON documents allowing you to email in your dispatch note with your courier information. Um, obviously, the barcode in the warehouse and the full warehouse management solution. And then the ability to pick back and dispatch um, at warehouse and being able to print the barcodes on, on the handheld devices. So I think Michelle has done a great job today. Um, please, that we have uh, anybody wants to reach out to us and organise a one-to-one -one session, please do. Um, and we'd be more than happy to arrange that for you. Um, I don't think we have any questions. Um, I'll just quickly check. I don't think so. Um, but um, for anyone that has any questions, please reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to, to help out or arrange a one-to-one -one demo as we've already stated. So I think that's it this morning. Um, thanks so much for your time. and we've Thanks for listening. These, thanks, Michelle. We hope you found these webinars um, useful. Fabulous. Thanks, thanks very much. Thanks, Appreciate Michelle. it. Bye, Bye now. Bye-bye.